Hi, it's Dwyer. December 8th, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we've been talking about NFL futures here in some prior videos, right? As I stated in an earlier video, shortly before the news dropped, that Vaughn Miller is out for the year, right? Not just short term, but long term, right? In the AFC, I believe the best plays on the board are the two top seeded teams. The Buffalo Bills, they're a must, right? Things line up well for them. And the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Those are the top two teams that I would be putting most of my money on. Understand, I don't like the Bengals' remaining schedule, right? Hopefully you have some money on the Bengals from earlier. But I don't like their remaining schedule. I don't like Miami's remaining schedule. In Baltimore, and I'm just naming the teams I think are toward the top of the AFC, I don't like not having a healthy Lamar Jackson, right? I would rather have Lamar, not his backup. I understand the backup did some good things last year. But the league knows Lamar, and Lamar has still been successful. With these backups, and I think we're going to learn this in San Francisco, when the backup first comes in and defensive coordinators don't have tape on the backup, the backup looks good. The moment of truth comes when the defensive coordinators around the league have tape on you. We know Lamar Jackson can still be successful. We don't know that with his backup. Now let's talk about the NFC, right? So in the AFC... If Buffalo runs the table, they're the one seed, right? Kansas City had that opportunity, got beaten in Cincinnati last week. If Buffalo stumbles, KC is perfectly situated, provided they don't lose track of their offense against the Denver Bronco defense. They play Denver twice during the remainder of the year. They also have a game against Seattle, but Seattle's defense is suspect, and that game is in Kansas City, right? So at this point, just thinking in terms of where I'm putting my futures money, it's on Buffalo and it's on KC in the AFC. Now, in the NFC, I thought I had the answer in San Francisco, right? I believe San Francisco is a better team than Philly, Dallas, Minnesota, right? But I don't like dealing with backup quarterbacks. I was putting my faith in Jimmy Garoppolo, who has a winning regular season record and who has proven that he can get a team to the Super Bowl, right? Which he did with San Francisco in the past. Understand, if Jimmy hit Emmanuel Sanders with a bomb in that Super Bowl against Kansas City, we'd be talking about Jimmy, the Super Bowl champion. He blew that pass. 49er fans know exactly what I'm talking about. He blew that pass. Kansas City came back in that game, beat the Niners. Understand, Jimmy's resilient. Jimmy was back in the NFC Championship game last year. Lost to the Rams, right, in a game in which the Niners were winning in the second half. Well, Jimmy's out, so I'm off the 49er train. I understand they still have an excellent chance of winning their division. They have the jump on Seattle right now. They have a much better defense than Seattle has. I get all of that. I just don't believe backups going to be able to work magic in the NFC playoffs. Also, I'm not buying these reports that Jimmy has an outside shot of coming back. Right? So in the NFC, there are two teams I'm focusing on, and I'll name a third as a wild card possibility. Right? By a wild card possibility, I don't mean literally. Right? I expect this team to win their division. 
But I mean, this team has an outside chance if they can just play up to their capability on offense. So right now, the best situation in the NFC, the likely one seed, they have the jump on the Dallas Cowboys are the Philadelphia Eagles. Right? Just understand, Philly, two-game lead on the Cowboys. They already beat Dallas. So it's two games plus. Their next three games are on the road, but they're all extremely winnable games. At the Giants. At the Bears. Then we get the big game. Right? At the Cowboys. Well, folks, they've already beaten the Cowboys. The Cowboys are that weird kind of team that can just come out and lay an egg at home. But even if they lose to the Cowboys, they would still have a one-plus lead on the Cowboys, assuming they beat the Giants and Bears, and they would close the season with two home games, one against the Saints and one against the Giants. I believe Philly is the one seed in the NFC. Right? Let's talk about the best team in the NFC. No, that's not Minnesota, according to my math. I believe the best team in the NFC are, believe it or not, the Dallas Cowboys. Right, folks? They have the best defense in the NFC. As good as Philly's defense is, the Cowboy defense is the standard in the conference, right? The problem with a futures bet on the Cowboys, and that's what I'm suggesting here, right? Your top two teams in the conference, in my opinion, are both from the NFC East. You want to focus on Philly? They're in the best situation. And then you want to focus on the best team in the conference. And with San Francisco diminished, I believe the best team in the conference are the Cowboys. I cannot overlook the defensive gap between the Vikings and the Cowboys. But here's the problem. The best team in the conference is not going to be the division winner. In other words, the Cowboys are going to be a wild card in the playoffs. Worse yet, you're going to have to rely on Mike McCarthy in the playoffs. Folks, that's perilous. Right? You also have to believe in the Cowboys being able to win on the road in the playoffs. Multiple games. So apart from the NFC Eastern teams I've mentioned, the Eagles and the Cowboys, the wild card in the NFC, more so than Seattle, which plays four of their last five games at home, but the wild card in the NFC are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Folks, you and I know Tom Brady's lost a step, right? Let's just get outside the public narrative. You and I know the weakness on the team is Tom Brady's offense. Tampa's defense is actually better than Tampa's offense. The offense has been a disappointment this year. But here's the rub. It is Tom Brady. The defense is going to keep them in games. Right? By the way, there are a lot of similarities between Tampa and the Denver Broncos who aren't in the playoffs. The difference is Tampa's won some games. They shouldn't have won at the end of games. Denver loses all of those games. Right? Denver has a superstar quarterback, Russell Wilson. I know. The public's down on him this year and stuff like that. Look at Russell's contract. Folks, that contract was earned. Right? And, of course, Tom Brady, another superstar quarterback 
one of the themes of this season is that many superstar quarterbacks have been roughed up. Right? Aaron Rodgers, bad thumb. Not a typical Rodgers season. Right? Then, of course, you have Brady and Wilson. But I can't get out of my head the idea that Mike Evans, Godwin, Julio Jones are the guys Tom Brady is throwing the ball to. Right? There's the possibility that Denver in this last month of the season, finds a way to even be average offensively. Right? Keep in mind, I expect them to win a division, unlike the Dallas Cowboys. And when the game's on the line, and when you need a quarterback who's going to be throwing strikes downfield, even in his mid-40s, Tom Brady is among the elites. So, the NFC is a mess. Folks, in my opinion, the best team in the NFC is the team in second place in the NFC East. They're not going to win a division. Right? I'm here talking up Tampa. Folks, Tampa is struggling. Tampa is around 500 right now. Tampa should have lost the Saint game. You and I both know that. So let's just say, if I had two teams to bet on, on futures, in the NFC, they would be Philly. I can't ignore the lead they have. I can't ignore their situation right now. Right? Leading their division. Uh, Multi-game lead on other teams for home field advantage in the conference. It would be Philly and it would be Dallas. If I had to venture into a third team, it would be Tampa. Tampa's defense is better than Seattle's defense. And that matters. Right? The other thing too with Seattle that's a little nerve-wracking is the fact that while I no longer think the 49ers can come out of the NFC, the 49ers right now are ahead of Seattle in the division, right? The Niners might have enough juice to win two or three more games, right? The Niners could well win the division. Right? Also, they played before. Seattle played the Niners earlier this year. The Niners beat them. Right? There's a big game coming up in Seattle. Seattle against the Niners. If the Niners win that game and can just win a couple others, they win the division. Right? So there's a chance that Seattle with a shaky defense, a defense that's non-elite, a defense that's not the Cowboy defense, a defense that not, that's not Tampa's defense. If Seattle doesn't win the division, then they'll be struggling to make a wild card. And unlike the Cowboys, who look like they have the talent, perhaps not the record, but the talent, to run the table, I don't think Seattle does, right? One of Seattle's games, of course, is against KC in KC, right? So in the AFC, I believe only two teams have a legitimate shot at being the top seed. You want both of them, Buffalo and Kansas City, right? I'll agree, I'll agree. There's a lot of other talent there, right? Miami, Cincinnati, Baltimore. Cincinnati is the team that's caught my attention, right? Food for thought. In the NFC, I believe only one team has a realistic shot 
of being the top seed. And that's Philadelphia. I don't believe they're the best team in the conference. Right? I believe the best team in the conference are the Dallas Cowboys. I'll agree. The Cowboys are going to have to travel a wild card route to win the conference. I believe they have the talent to do so. Right? But make no mistake. I believe you also need to have at least some long shot money on Tampa Bay. Right? You need to look at the team. I know the offense has been anemic. They were missing in action for three-plus quarters against the Saints. In other words, the offense is not playing well now. And you need to just think to yourself, remind yourself, I've seen Tom Brady succeed through adversity. I know what Chris Godwin can do. I know what Mike Evans can do. I know Julio Jones, the idea of Julio Jones as a third receiver was preposterous a couple years ago. Well, it's reality right now. And you understand any of those receivers might be able to ignite and catch fire. Tom Brady might be able to have offensive support, right? What's Leonard Fournette's nickname? Isn't it something like Playoff Lenny or something like that? Right? And, of course, the experience matters. Tampa recently won a Super Bowl. Tampa made the playoffs but lost to the Rams last year. Right? In a game in which they made a comeback. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Keep in mind, too, we're going to adjust our scales and put more money on various teams as we get more information, as the games are played, right? Certainly this list changes immediately. If Tom Brady gets hurt, if Dak Prescott gets hurt, then I'm going to back off those teams as I've backed off the Niners with Jimmy Garoppolo getting hurt, right? I don't believe in that many quarterbacks. Let me also say too, I can sense when a quarterback I believe in is hot. I agree. Joe Burrow is hot right now in the AFC. The problem he has is that the Bills and Kansas City also have explosive quarterbacks and are in a better position than the Bengals are right now because of what they did during the season to get to this point. So that's how I see it. Don't be bashful. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.